All right, we're going to look at some problems here uh, that are going to be on the test, Chapter 2 test. These are exact problems. Again, don't try to memorize what we're doing here. Just sort of understand what we're doing here. So the first problem says x cubed plus 27. So I'm saying, wait a second, this is a cubic polynomial. So that is a clue i got to use the SOFAs idea. The first thing I have to do is I have to break each of these pieces down and say, hey, the cubic root of this is what? The cubic root of 27 is what? So what times what times what gives you x cubed? That would be an x. And this plus will be right here, 27. What times what times what's 27? Well, that's going to be 3. So the opening binomial that I gotta have to use, that I'm going to have to use is x plus 3. Now is when I do the SOFAs part. So I go S O F A S for SOFAs. The S stands for squaring this first piece. X times an X, X squared. O, opposite symbol. Since this is a plus, I must use a subtraction sign. F, fuse these together. That's going to be 3x. A stands for always add, so that is always going to be an addition right there. And the final S stands for square this final piece. 3 times 3 is a 9. So this binomial times this trinomial is the factoring part of x cubed plus 27. That's its factorization. Let's go to the next problem over here. We'll slide it over a little bit. So we have x cubed plus x plus 5x squared plus 5. As soon as I see four pieces, I know it's got to be factored by grouping. So I'm going to group these pieces, group these pieces. Now I'm going to see what factors out. He has an x cubed and x. They have an x that can be pulled out there. <clears throat> That's the most that can be pulled out. He can't pour out more because he only has an x to give. So x times what is x cubed? That's x squared x times what gives you that x? That's going to be plus 1. Plus, now what factors out here? Well, they both have a 5. He has x squared. He doesn't have any, so 5 is the most that can come out. So 5 times what gives you 5x squared? An x squared. 5 times what gives you the plus 5? That's going to be plus 1 here. Now notice, this has an x squared plus 1. This has an x squared plus 1. So we factor out, again, the x squared plus 1. We're left behind with x squared plus 1 times the x, and an x squared plus 1 times the 5. So these two pieces that are the same will come out front, and you'll be left behind with the x plus 5 here. I guarantee you that this binomial times that binomial will create those four pieces up top. Now let's look at the next problem here. We have 15 xy minus 20xy to the 35th. Well, that seems a bit weird. I don't know what to do. Well, it's not a problem like above where it's a sofa's. It's not four pieces. This is just basic. Hey, somebody's factoring out here. You have 15 and you have 20. What's the most that can come out? Well, a 5 can come out there. You have an x. He has an x. So an x can come out. He has a y. He has y to the 35th. Well, that means a single y is the most that can come out. What are we left behind with? Well, 5xy times what gives you 15xy? Well, 5 times the 3 will give you the 15. You've already pulled the x and y out, so you're good. Minus. Now, 5 times what gives me the 20? That's going to be a 4. I've already pulled the x out. There's 35 y's here. We pulled one out, so we're left behind with y to the 34th, because y times y to the 34th will give you y to the 35th. And that's what it factors to. This is just a basic factoring out. Now if we slide and let's look at this guy, we have an x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 10. This again is like the second problem we did where it's by grouping because I see, three, I see four things. The thing that's different here is notice you have a minus. And if I group these, which I'm going to do, if I try to group these, the problem is that negative is going to have to be distributed through. So we simply just come here and change this to plus a negative 5x, and now we can group perfectly fine. I see what can factor out here. An x squared can be pulled out. x squared times x will give you the x cubed, minus x squared times what will give me 2x squared? A 2. Now here, I'm going to have plus. I have a negative. When we do this changing subtraction to a, you know, change it to a plus negative, 
you're always going to be pulling out a negative number here. So you have 5 and 10, so we're going to pull out a negative 5. What will be left behind is negative 5 times the x will give us the negative 5x. And then negative 5 times what will give us positive 10? That's going to be a negative 2. Now we have an x minus 2 and x minus 2, so that comes out front. You have x squared plus a negative 5, so it's going to be x squared. Instead of writing plus negative 5, we'll go ahead and switch back to just simply minus 5 here. This binomial times this binomial creates those four terms above. Now let's look at this next piece. Well, again, I have another factor by grouping. So what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to take that group and that group. Now it's a little different here. That's why I included this problem. <clears throat> We've done them in class, but I want to make sure that we see it. I have x squared y plus an x. So what do they have in common that can be factored out? That's going to be an x. I'll be left behind with, well, x times what gives you x squared y? Well, x times an x will give me the x squared, and then there's simply a y. Plus, we already pulled the x out, so it's got to be a 1 right here, because x times 1 will give me the x. Plus, now what factors out here? He doesn't have any x, y's, but he has a 5, and he has a 5. So a 5 comes out. I'm left behind with an x, y here, and 5 times a 1 will give me that 5, because 5 times x, y gives you the 5xy, 5 times the 1 gives you the 5. Then notice they both have an xy plus 1, xy plus 1. So that's what we bring out front. And then you have an x plus the 5 that is right here. Not that difficult to do. <clears throat> Let's look at the next guy. Right away I see y cubed, x cubed. I'm thinking cubic. And yes, a 1,000 is a perfect cube. Because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So, I'm simply going to break this one down and break this one down. What's the cubic root of all that? Well, the cubic root of 1,000 is 10. The cubic root of y cubed is a y. Minus, what's the cubic root of that? That's simply an x. Now is when I do the sofas. S-O-F-A-S. It's like a cheer. S, square the first piece. 10y times 10y is a hundred y squared. O stands for opposite, so that's subtraction, so I'm going to change it to addition. F, fuse these together. So 10y times an x is 10xy. You could put yx, but if we're multiplying two variables, we always sort of put it in alphabetical order. A stands for always add. S, square the final piece. x times an x is x squared. And there will be my answer to this factorization of this. It breaks down into this binomial times this trinomial. And now the final piece of the factoring that we have is this guy right here. 3x squared plus 32x plus 20. <clears throat> now, most of you, we could play with combinations or we could bust B. I think most of you are going to probably bust B. You're, just, you're scared of the other method. You shouldn't be but I know you are. So any method I'm going to allow to work. So to bus B, we take the A value and the C value here, and we multiply them. 3 times 20 gives me 60. We now have to sit here and list out the factors of 60. 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20. I know everything's left has to be between 3 and 20. 4 times 15. 5 times anything? Yeah, 5 times a 12. And again, you have a calculator. Do 60 divided by 5 and see if it gives you a nice whole number answer. It will. It'll give you 12. So I know 5 times 12 is 60. 6 times, yep, 10. 7 times nothing. 8 times nothing. Now I'm back here. So I know these are all the factors. you got to figure out, we're gonna. it's called busting B, because what you're going to do is you're going to bust that B into two separate pieces. Which two of these would combine to give us 32? Not that, not that, not that, no. Woo, right here she is, the 30 and the 2. So it's going to be, I'm going to simply bust this into a 30x plus a 2x, or a 2x plus 30. It doesn't make any difference. You're going to get the same answer either way. Now, so I busted the b into its two pieces. The front piece was 3x squared plus a 30x plus 2x plus, and the back piece was a 20. Now all you're going to do is you now go into what we've done before, factor by grouping. 
3x squared plus 30x. I see a 3 can come out. He has x squared, he has an x, so an x comes out. 3x times what gives me 3x squared? An x plus 3x times what will give you 30x? Well, 3 times a 10 will give me that 30, and I've already pulled the x out, so there's what I have there. Plus 2x and 20. Well, all that can come out is a 2, and you'll be left behind with an x plus, well, 2 times what gives me 20? 10. Because 2 times x gives me the 2x, 2 times the 10 gives me the 20. So now I have it, x plus 10 and x plus 10, so I pull that out. And I went on with 3x plus 2. There, we busted B, broke it down. That's what it factors to. <clears throat> now, you could do it the other method. Again, I'm not going to go over that because I know that most all of you are going to bust B. So, and I'm going to allow you to choose whichever technique you like. So I'm going to leave it at that. There's a good seven problems on your test on Monday done for you. You should under if you understand how the, all these are done. The rest of that whole the first 22 problems will be piece of cake.